Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, my name is Nikki LaRose. I'm a professional makeup artist based in Los Angeles. And for today's video, I'm sharing my top tips and techniques on how to wear makeup when it's hot and humid outside. So first things first, let's start with how you prep your skin. You want to think simple, just keep it simple. Less is more. And that's gonna be the theme throughout this whole video. Less is more with your makeup and also your skin prep. So ditch the nine step, five step skincare routine for summertime because Ultimately, you wanna have less layers underneath your makeup, so there's less of a chance of it sliding down your skin. So with that said, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite sunscreens to wear if it's really hot outside and I just want a nice amount of hydration that's going to absorb well into my skin and not leave my skin overly shiny and greasy before I even put my makeup on. This has been a favorite for a while. My friend Susan turned me on to this a long time ago. It's a Biore UV Aqua Rich Watery Essence SPF 50 PA++++, it's a very long name. So this is gonna act like your sunscreen, but it's also gonna act like your moisturizer because it's very hydrating. It's very watery, very hydrating. So we're gonna put this all over first and just, you know, get it on. I did start with the toner off camera. So my skin was prepped already and this is gonna be my finishing step. But you know, summertime, this is when you wanna reevaluate all your steps that normally work for your skin and kind of just take a step back from that and think, okay, what can I eliminate? What can I cut down? What do I not need during the summer? Because you don't need to have a super rich, thick cream on in the summertime. Your skin is going to be producing sweat. It's going to be producing more oil because of the climate and the humidity and the heat that you're in. So unless you're severely dry, skip your thick moisturizer that is leaving you too shiny and opt for something that's water-based. Water-based formulas are gonna feel so nice, so comfortable and so lightweight when you're wearing it all throughout the day with makeup on top. So that's one of the reasons why I love this one because it is a water-based. It's very thin, lightweight and it absorbs super quick into your skin. So that's also something you wanna look for is just products that dry down very quickly. Now, let's say you are on the really dry side, then disregard the water-based formula and you can use your moisturizer that you love that's working great for your dry skin, but just make sure you're laying it dry down almost entirely before you put your foundation on top. And also, if you can, just use a little bit less of it because I promise you, it will absorb better into your skin and you won't have that slip and slide layer throughout the day that's making your makeup move around. So now that my skin is prepped, I'm gonna let this dry down a touch more. And then while this is drying down, I always suggest utilizing this time to the best of your ability and doing something in between. So you're not like idle, scrolling Instagram or TikTok and just wasting your time. So for me, if I'm waiting for my skincare to dry down completely before I do my makeup, I like to skip ahead to my brows. So my brows are very, very lightly filled in just so I don't scare the audience, but I'm going to finish them with you all and I'm gonna show you some of my best tips on how to keep your brows on when it's super hot outside. A disclaimer about brows, which I always kind of tap into is not everyone's brows are the same and not everyone's gonna have the same struggles with their brows, especially in the heat as someone like me does who has very sparse brows and then the brow hair that I have is very fine. If you don't have brows that are even slightly like mine, you might wanna skip ahead. If you have like really thick, full brows, this is not gonna really be that beneficial for you. So just a forewarning. But if you're with me and you can relate, let me show you some amazing tricks on how to keep your brows in place. I'm going to start with the Makeup Forever HD Loose Powder. This is the good old old school translucent formula. It has no tint to it. They have some new ones now that have a little bit of tint to it. This is the OG. So I'm gonna shake some into the cap. And I have a little bit of brow pencil in my brows, just a little bit, not like a ton. So what I'm gonna do is tap a blending brush into the powder, and then we're just gonna run this through the brow. Super quick, easy, very basic. What this is gonna do is give the rest of the brow products I'm about to put on better grip. So instead of putting it on top of really slick skin, especially after you prep your skin. Two things you could do to avoid it is, one, powdering your brows before you go in with the rest of your products so they stick better. Or two, doing your brows completely before you even do your skincare. I know it seems a little wacky to do in that order, but trust me, if you have, if you really struggle with your brows and then being thin and then being too shiny throughout the day because of like the heat or just if you have oily skin, it's a game changer to do them before anything. But now that my brows are powdered, I'm gonna grab one of my favorite products. It's the Wow Brow from e.l.f. Cosmetics. I wear the shade Dark Brown and this is one of my go-tos. This is great for not only making my brows look thicker, but also it helps to hold them up into place with a good, it has a good medium hold, I'd say. So I'm gonna push this up 
and just kind of complete my brows on camera. So what I don't recommend if you are doing your brows and it's super hot, like let's say it's summer, it's 100 plus degrees outside, skip pencils that have a shiny finish to them. A lot of them have a shiny finish to them where they're just too waxy, where they're gonna slip inside on your skin. Choose ones that have more of a dry down, they just go on more matte in general. Like the Patrick Ta one that I'm about to fill in the rest of my brows with is ideal for heat and humidity because it stays on so well. Another brow product that you definitely, I don't recommend you try to use in the summer is the jelly like brow freezes, like the pomades. This one right here, it's from Anastasia Beverly Hills. Elf Cosmetics also has one that's a direct duplicate of this product. And this does say brow freeze, but this does not freeze your brows when it's super hot outside. The heat and humidity will definitely break through that product really, really quickly, just like any tinted brow pomades, like the Anastasia Beverly Hills ones. If you're still using those, skip it in the summer. They don't stay put in my opinion and they tend to just slide down your face. So now that my brows are filled in a lot more, I'm feeling much better about my brow situation. I'm gonna fill them in the rest of the way with the Patrick Ta Major Brow Pencil in Dark Brown. So this is the one I mentioned that is very long lasting, doesn't have a shiny finish, doesn't slip off my skin. And as an oily skin girl, a lot of the same tips for oily skin people will translate to summer weather makeup applications, if that makes sense. So if you watch any of my videos and I talk about tips for oily skin, a lot of those same tips are gonna be very helpful for a summer makeup application. So just something to keep in mind. So I know I talk about this a lot for my oily skin people out there, but it's also gonna be great just in general for hot humidity. So I'm gonna fill in any other patches or areas that that brow gel did not cover. So like the tail of my brow where I really don't have any hair for it to grip onto, that's when I need my pencil. And since I have that little layer of powder throughout my brows, this is sticking so much better and actually goes on more pigmented too. Lastly, if you want your brows to stay up and pushed up and just not fall down your face throughout the heat and humidity, utilize a good, strong, brow gel, like a not tinted one, just a nice clear finishing brow gel. So what this is gonna do is hold your brows up and keep them into place and like lock them down for the rest of the day. So this is one of my favorites. It's very, very strong. It's the Patrick Ta Major Brow Lamination Gel. So you do wanna be careful and not push too hard on this product with the wand because if you push too hard, you're gonna inevitably lift up that brow pencil and all that work of applying the color. Light pressure, and then what I like to do is flip the brush to where it has just that flat end and gently push my brow hair up. Now let's say you wanna skip the brow gel, you don't wanna buy it because you don't feel like you're getting enough use out of it and you want something that's multi-use. If you get a really strong hairspray, like this one from Got To Be, and you spray it in just a clean spoolie, this is going to also help keep your brows up and in place throughout the day. Okay, so now that my brows are on, we're gonna move back to skin. So now that my skin prep is fully dried down, now we could go in with a primer. So there's two primers that I love for high humidity. One is gonna be a mattifying primer. So for those people who have really, really oily skin, a mattifying primer is gonna be a nice tool to utilize to just really combat that oil coming through in the T-zone especially. There are so many on the market that I love and that I use, but I actually got one recently from L'Oreal. It's a new one, it's drugstore and it works just as good as the Makeup Forever one that I'm a really big fan of, and also a NARS one that I was a big fan of as well before I ran out. So let me show you this one. I'm gonna use a little bit. Another option that is great too for longevity of makeup is the Milk Hydro Grip. But when summertime hits and you wanna combat shine, this is a great primer to use because it is going to help mattify. This one is not so much mattifying as it is just, it's gonna to help to grip whatever you put on top and really like lock it in. And also I feel like I've used this one so many times on my channel so you kind of get the idea of what it looks like on. So let's switch it up. It's the L'Oreal Prime Lab 24 hour matte setter primer. So I'm gonna use just a small amount because again, don't forget less is more, especially with your primer. You don't need a lot of it. And this is actually really thin in texture, which also is why I like it for hot weather, humidity. It's not like a thick, goopy, glue type feeling, which just feels terrible on your skin, especially when it is hot outside. So it's nice and lightweight. I'm just gonna keep it in the center of my face, like my T-zone. For me, I get oily around my nose, above my lip, the top of my chin, and then right here between my brows. If you get oily all over, apply a thin layer throughout, but just keep it thin. Less is more. Thin layers is going to be key 
for keeping any makeup on through heat and humidity. Now that we have the primer on and it's dry down extremely quick. Before I jump into foundation, there's one last step in skin prep that I want you to utilize. And this is a game changer. And I feel like a lot of people don't think to do this, but if you do this, it's such a great mid step in locking your makeup into place. What I'm talking about is using a setting spray, not just as your finishing step in between your skin prep and your foundation to just lock that into place. This is one of my all time favorites. I'm almost out of it. It's the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless setting spray. This is something that I grab when I want either my makeup or my client's makeup to be budge proof. This is a phenomenal setting spray. So I'm going to thoroughly coat my entire face with this and let this dry down. So hold on. Now to dry this down quicker, I'm just gonna grab my fan that I got from Half Magic recently in PR. It's the cutest thing I've ever seen. This fan came with a bunch of their liquid eyeshadow. So thank you, Half Magic. I'm so excited because this fan has come in so handy. Okay, so that just sped up that dry time. That was so quick. Now we can actually move on to foundation. Now I have some great recommendations for formulas that I know work the best in high humidity and high heat. So one thing I wanna point out is avoid your luminous and your glowy and your dewy formulas. Those formulas, although they look gorgeous, what I suggest to do, and this is one of my best tips, is start with a semi-matte finish because you're gonna get that oil and that shine no matter what. If you're severely oily and you wanna just keep your makeup on in that high heat, then go for a solid matte formula. If you're somewhere in between like a combination or especially if you are dry, satin finishes are going to be your best friend. These are two of my favorite satin finishes at the moment. This is the Exa High Fidelity Semi Satin Foundation. This is gorgeous. And this is the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. This is also one of my all time favorites. So both of these formulas stay on so well throughout the day. Even if you're outside in the elements and it's super hot, this is a great, great formula. Even if you don't take all the steps to prep your skin the way I recommend for high humidity and heat, this will still stay put so much longer than a glowy or luminous finish foundation. So I wear the shade 230 light medium cool. I'm gonna pump some out on my palette and I'm gonna start with a small amount. I'm gonna start with this because like I said in the beginning of the video, less is more. Just keep that in mind. I'm gonna take a buffing brush. This is just from e.l.f. Cosmetics. And we're gonna start in the center of the face. And what I like to do when I want my makeup to stay on through the heat is push it onto my skin. So I'm not going and buffing it and going in circles. I'm just pushing it on and really pressing it into my skin. This is another one of my favorite, favorite tips for makeup in the heat. It's just make sure you are applying a good amount of pressure to get that on. Okay, I'm dipping into more. So this is a nice thin layer of that foundation pushed and really pressed into my skin all over. So even if you wanna build up more coverage, let's say you want a full, full coverage, that's totally fine. But you wanna start in layers and do it in one to two to three separate layers, allowing each layer in between to dry down properly before you go into the next layer. What I'm going to do now is just let this dry down. In fact, I'm gonna speed it up. I'm gonna grab my fan again. So now that my foundation has dried down, I'm going to go in with my concealer. I'm gonna show you two options. One is gonna be a very lightweight option. This is the glow-ish bright light sheer concealer. This is a nice option if you don't want a lot of coverage under your eyes and you don't want to look or feel very heavy or if you just don't need a lot of coverage under your eyes. This is actually really nice and it dries down pretty decent. It doesn't stay super luminous, which I, I really enjoy. Since I do like coverage and I feel like I need coverage under my eyes, this is my other favorite for concealer. This is the Forever Skin Correct Concealer from Dior. I wear the shade 2N. This is a very long wearing concealer. I think it says it's 16 hour. Oh, it says 24 hour wear, which is hilarious because you would never wear your concealer for 24 hours. I wouldn't recommend it anyway. So I'm gonna take this. I'm going to dot it where I need it. And yes, I like a lot. To be honest, it's still less than what I would normally put on. <laughs> so less is more. Now for longevity, when it's super hot outside, I have a few techniques that I love for blending out my concealer. And the first step to that is taking a really small, slightly, very slightly damp beauty sponge. And I'm gonna press this into the area, not applying a lot of pressure, just a very light amount of pressure. I don't wanna lift off any of that coverage. I wanna keep it, I, I need that coverage like I always talk about. So it's lightly pressing this into my skin but since this is a smaller amount of makeup, it's going to just feel a lot more lightweight throughout the day. Pressing it in. And now we move on to powdering the under eye. Now, I, I've got a really solid system for powdering under eyes. My best tip, I love this tip, is to take just a dry blending brush. This is just a Sephora 19 brush. 
take this brush now that my concealer is dried down and you want to gently bring it back and forth under anywhere you'd have fine lines basically so this is where you want to go in and blend out any creases that might have happened before you lock them into place with the powder basically so now that we've blended out those creases it's my next tip that i love take a tiny bit of loose setting powder avoid the finishing powders like the pressed powders and instead you want to use only in my opinion this is going to give you the best result for your makeup in the heat only utilize a very fine milled loose setting powder since it's so finely milled it feels like nothing on your skin so taking some more powder that's in my cap just on this nice small blending brush i'm going to run this back and forth under my eye and you're going to use just enough to mattify and set that area just enough consider this your first layer to set your under eye concealer okay so now that that is locked into place we are going to skip over to blush and the reason for that is because i am going to do one more round of powder under my eyes but that needs to go on after i finish this next step trust me the order just works magically so i'm going to take one of my current favorite blushes this is bloom blush multi-stick from persona cosmetics it's their newest shade I love it. It's so pretty. I cannot stop wearing it. So this is a cream blush and it's not a matte finish. This is going to have a little more of a dewy finish, but it's not overwhelming. It's not like greasy or gel like where it's going to kind of slide off your skin. This actually has great stain powder, but the way we're going to apply it is going to help even more. So we're going to take the blush. Now do not, don't just swipe it across your cheek. You're going to deposit a way too much product going to be a mess to blend out and you're not going to have as much control over how much product you're putting on your skin so instead i'm just going to take the same brush that i apply my foundation there's very little product left over and i'm going to tap into the blush and this is another one of my tricks too not just for heat and humidity but just for longevity of makeup if i want my blush on my clients or myself to last the whole day this is my technique i always use so i'm going to push this product in to the brush and then now i'm going to take the brush directly onto my cheek in a stippling motion so kind of the same motion as i applied my foundation that that kind of firm pressure and just push it onto the cheek and you can see it's got like a nice shiny finish to it now this may seem like it's not enough blush but hold on because we're going to set it with a powder in just a second so same thing on this side don't overdo it with the cream blush just don't trust me it's going to look great at first it's going to look beautiful and glowy and healthy but two hours into your day and it's hot outside, it's going to look horrible. I, I, I have seen this happen so many times. I've done it before too, just when I'm not thinking and you don't want to make this mistake. The way we're going to set it with a powder blush, you won't feel like you still need more cream blush. So now I'm going to lock it into place with a like-minded color in a powder formula. So this is going to A, intensify the color, which is great. But not only that, it's going to lock it down and lock it into place so it doesn't move. So I'm going to take Makeup by Mario Mellow Mauve. I love this blush formula. It's the soft pop powder blush. So it's a powder blush, but it's not like super matte and dull. It has like a nice, beautiful luminosity to it. I'm going to apply it with a BK Beauty 107. So I'm going to press this on top of that Bloom cream blush. These actually go great together. I love these two shades together. You can see the difference too. This is going to be a way more glossy, creamy, dewy finish. This has more of a satin finish. That's what you want. That's going to stay on through heat and humidity. So now tapping this onto this side and locking it down. And you'll notice too, I'm not buffing it and swirling it. I'm just pressing it on top of that cream and then we're done. We need to move on to bronzer. Now I'm going to use a cream bronzer and same thing, same technique. I'm going to show you how to apply it and then how to lock it into place. This is the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick. And this is optional, but this just works really well for applying a thin layer of this product. I'm going to put a good amount on the top of my hand. And with a BK Beauty 101, it's like a nice dense but slanted brush. You're gonna see how nice this applies bronzer throughout the forehead. So I'm gonna dip my brush and work that product from the top of my hand into the bristles. And then from there, we're gonna just press it and tap it into the forehead. This gives you a perfect, perfectly thin layer of product and it will give you just such a better, long lasting, lightweight finish than as opposed to swiping it directly onto your skin. Firmly pressing this onto the high points of my forehead. You're almost stamping it on. And then with whatever's left over, I'm just gonna push a little under my cheekbone. I'm not going to apply this on the side of my nose to contour my nose or to warm it up like I typically would. My nose is a very slippery area of my face. Like makeup just doesn't stick to that area in general. So instead we're gonna skip it in that area. This is a great bronzer. This is the Sephora Matte Bronzer. I wear the shade 03 Santorini. This is a matte one. So a matte bronzer is just a great formula to use in the summer. 
So I'm gonna take a big angled Patrick Ta double-ended brush. I'm gonna dip into the powder bronzer, work off the rest in my hand, and then same thing. I'm just gonna tap it on top of that cream and a nice thin layer. And then switching to another BK Beauty brush, this is a 201, dipping back to the bronzer, tap off the excess, and I'm gonna run it along the side of my nose because I just know that this is going to stay put. Whereas if I had that cream bronzer underneath, the chances of this sliding a little bit throughout the day is just very likely. So, and again, less is more, just a small amount. We're gonna go back to the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Powder. I don't know if I mentioned the name of this earlier. I think I just kind of got excited and set my under eyes, but this is the Easy Bake Powder from Huda Beauty. I wear the shade Cupcake. So here's the fun part. We're gonna go in with a powder puff. This is from LH Cosmetics. And we're gonna take the powder and we're going to properly set the entire face. I got a bunch of powder on the powder puff, but now instead of directly applying it to my face, which would be just too much product, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna work it into the inside of my hand. So now it has just a little bit, and now we're gonna focus on the T-zone first. So I'm gonna press this in the T-zone. Now dip into more product for this side. If you have very dry skin, but you still want that, you know, that locked in makeup for when it's super hot outside, you could avoid doing this all over your face and instead just focus it on the areas that you know you're gonna probably produce more shine and sweat throughout the day. But for high humidity and high heat, and if you have oily skin or even combo skin or a combination oily, you're gonna wanna lock this all over. Now, lastly, we're gonna take a little bit more and this is also optional. So if you have very dry under eyes, you're gonna wanna skip this step. If you don't and you know that you crease throughout the day or if your eye makeup tends to run onto the skin under your eyes, this is a great step to utilize. So taking a little bit extra powder on the powder puff and pushing it under the eyes, what this does is it locks that area into place and it keeps it really dry and matte. Okay, so now that our makeup is set, it's on, almost completely done except for the eyes. We're gonna go in with another layer of the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush setting spray and we're gonna get the entire face. Another reason to use that setting spray to not only finish your makeup, it's of course going to lock it into place, it's gonna help with longevity and all those things, but it's also gonna take away a lot of that powdery finish. So if you're not comfortable wearing the amount of powder that I just showed you how to put on, if you're not used to it, this is gonna help a lot with your comfort level. And it's also gonna take away that very powdery finish to your makeup. I like to save this step for after that, and that is, using a cream highlighter, but not just any formula cream highlighter. You have to be very particular. A lot of them are too wet or they just look too, too dewy on your skin and they look too drippy on your skin. This is gonna give you that beautiful glow, but also will give you great longevity. So it's amazing if it's really hot outside. This is the Milk Makeup Highlighter in the shade Lit. So we're gonna apply this in a very similar way that we did the bronzer. I'm gonna take it, work a bunch on the top of my hand this is also gonna warm it up too, which is great. Now I'm gonna go back to my little sponge. I'm gonna take the clean biggest part of it and we're gonna pick up that highlighter and you're gonna press it on whatever areas you prefer to highlight. For me, I love to highlight the very top of the bridge of my nose. I avoid this because I don't wanna have like a ski slope of just glow going down my nose. I wanna have balance. So I'm gonna leave this in between part bare and I'm gonna skip to the tip of my nose and just, you know, because a lot of people like this area, I don't know myself, but for demonstrative purposes, I'm gonna highlight the top of my cupid's bow. I'm gonna go back to the milk stick and in case it wasn't clear, I know I talk about this so often, but if you don't wanna ruin your makeup or disrupt your beautifully placed and blended makeup that is set and locked into place with a cream product, don't directly swipe it. I'm gonna find the highest point of my cheekbone right here and just lightly press it. This is going on top of set makeup. So it's gonna grip no matter what. So just tapping it lightly. I love this formula. This was such a big surprise. I, when I first got this, I thought, okay, you know, it's a highlighter. And I finally started using it and I've been using it ever since. It's in my makeup kit. I love this formula. You don't need to go in with a powder highlighter. I think that's just a little too much. And like I said, honestly, you're gonna get glow throughout the day no matter what, because it's going to be hot outside. Our complexion is done. We are ready to hit the hot day, the hot summer day. We're ready to hit the pool party. Whatever you're going to do in your summer time heat, we're ready to go. But now let's move on to eyes. So the first thing I wanna do is, you see all this oil that's on my eyelids right now? This is from my sunscreen and this is all just natural oils that are being produced throughout the video. Like as I'm sitting here, my eyelids are producing oil. So before you go in with anything, your eyeshadow, don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. Go back to your powder puff, take a tiny bit and just gently mattify your eyelid. This is gonna be a game changer. And when you do this, unless you have 
crazy, crazy oily eyelids where you know all your eyeshadows crease no matter what. Unless you have that scenario, this is gonna be more than enough to keep your eyeshadow from creasing. But if you do have that scenario that I just mentioned where everything creases, you should get a good eyeshadow primer. One that I love for really oily skin is the Master Eye Prep and Set. It's a whole combo. So you get the two creams that you put on your eyelid and then you set it with the powder. This will keep your eye makeup on, your eyeshadows from creasing all day. If you have more dry eyelids, but you wanna have that extra bit of longevity, this is a nice formula. It's really thin, feels like nothing on your eyelids. It's from Rare Beauty. This is a good go-to as well. I'm not gonna do one of these because I'm going to use one of my favorite products for long, Jevity. I've used these in my makeup kit for years. They're the Make It Forever Aqua Resist Smoky Shadow. This one's not a smoky color, but these are waterproof. I found these probably over 10 years ago. I remember I did a commercial. The part of the commercial was the model had to jump in the pool and her makeup had to stay on. So I was like scrambling like back in the day, like what am I gonna use? Like what, what do I put on them that's not gonna melt and run? But I got these, I got these shadow sticks in a couple of fun colors and it didn't move. So it definitely worked and I've been using them ever since. This is one of my favorite shades from the brand. It's number 12 Sunrise and Sunrise, you just can't go wrong. So now that my eyelids are nice and matte, so I'm gonna run this all over my eyelid. It's quick, it's easy. I get asked a lot about what I recommend for like a one and done eyeshadow and I promise you I'm gonna film that so soon. But this would be one of them because you put it all over and then you can just take a small blending brush, blend out the edges and you have yourself pretty much a 30 second eye makeup look like you're done and the beauty of this is since it's waterproof it's also going to be sweat proof you are looking for sweat proof makeup especially with eye products look for products that are long wear water resistant at the very minimum or waterproof but how pretty is that so i'm going to finish this eye and again you could go to the gym if you wanted to I'm just saying you could run a marathon with this eyeshadow on and it's not gonna crease. It's not gonna run and it's not gonna crease. So when summertime heat hits you and humidity, this is a great easy eyeshadow look and easy eyeshadow product to just throw on and be done. Same brush, I'm gonna dip into this and just add a little more dimension to my crease, making it a nice complete eye makeup look. Pencils are a little tricky because if you put them in your waterline, it's really difficult to find one that doesn't run at all no matter what, you're gonna still get some little itty bit of transfer because you're putting it on a wet area. With that said, this is a great, great formula for longevity. It's gonna run just a touch if you put it too much in your waterline. So instead, what I suggest is avoid your waterline in the summer. If you know you're prone to running and sweating, it's just gonna be kind of messy, just avoid it. You don't need it because the chances of it not running are pretty low. So I'm gonna run this on the top lash line on both sides. This formula does dry down pretty quickly. So if you're wanting to smudge it out, you gotta jump on that opportunity right away. Just running that as close to my lash line as possible. And now before it dries down completely, I'm gonna grab a 204. This is one of my favorite smudging and blending brushes from BK Beauty and just lightly, lightly blend it out. We're just doing a very simple eye look to demonstrate the techniques on how to keep your eye makeup on. We're just keeping it nice and simple. The last step that you'd want to do, if you really wanna keep it on, all day long and keep it from transferring from here to here when it's really, really hot. The last thing you wanna do is take a like-minded color in a powder. So a powder eyeshadow and a dark brown. So I'm gonna take one of my Kaja Bento Box or Beauty Bentos in the shade Neutral Moment. This has a really pretty dark, rich brown. Same brush, I'm gonna dip into that dark brown, tap off the excess, and we're gonna push this to the lid. We're not gonna run it back and forth. I'm just gonna push it onto that pencil and lock it into place. And that's all you need to do in order for it to not transfer from your lash line to your top lid. So do this and it's very simple, very easy, and it will lock that eyeliner, that pencil eyeliner into place. So what I'm gonna suggest next might be an unpopular opinion, and that is skipping mascara on your bottom lash line. I know, I know, we a lot of us love it. It looks beautiful, it looks super sultry, and you know opens your eye up and makes your eyes look even bigger but I'm gonna be really real with you. Anytime I've ever put bottom mascara on a client when we're doing a shoot outside and I think, oh, I'm, it's okay, I'm here, I can fix it. You know, whatever happens, I can fix it. 
I've hated myself for it because because it always ended up transferring a, even just a little bit. And that's even with setting your under eye and doing all the things in preparation for it not to happen. So I say just skip it. Skip the hassle, skip the worry. That way you don't even have to worry about it. It has, doesn't even have to be a thought throughout the day when you're outside and you're sweating. Take any medium to dark eyeshadow. Same little brush, just take a little bit. And you're gonna run this as close to your bottom lash line as humanly possible. Like So let me show you how to do it. It's super easy. Just run it close to your lashes. So next, I'm just gonna apply mascara. I'm not gonna apply a waterproof because I'm only keeping it on my top lash line and I know it's not gonna transfer. I don't have creamy products on my eyelid. I have that shadow stick that dries down, it's waterproof. I don't have anything that's going to make it transfer onto my eyelid. If you're really, really concerned about that, of course you can switch it out for a waterproof, but I say it's completely optional. So this is the Major Volume Mascara from Patrick Ta. It's one of my favorites. Okay, mascara is done. For the sake of finishing this makeup look, it doesn't really matter what you put on your lips because inevitably you have to touch up your lips no matter what. You eat, you drink, your lipstick is gonna come off. So I'm just gonna throw on a really pretty combo that I love. It's Tower 28 Work of Art Lip Liner. I discovered this the other day because I was doing my makeup once I like got to work. This is one of my things I do when I'm in a hurry. I got to work, was parked. And I, I pack like a small kit of makeup for myself and I just do my makeup when I get to work basically. But I forgot lipstick. So I had my Bloom blush from Persona Cosmetics and I put this on top of that lip liner and it was the prettiest combo ever. But since I'm not in my car and I didn't forget my lipstick, I'm gonna top it with one of my favorite glosses. It's from Play. Now just for safe measure, cause why not? If it's 110 degrees outside, why not just do one extra layer of setting spray? You cannot go wrong. Sometimes I spray my clients three to four times throughout the makeup application. So it may feel like you're getting a shower or a bath with your makeup, but trust me, more is more when it comes to setting spray. In the right order, laying it dry down in between, more is more with this. So I'm gonna do one finishing spray of the airbrush setting spray from Charlotte Tilbury. Just a little one. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. These are some of my best and favorite tips on how to wear makeup in high humidity or just high heat. Let me know if these tips and techniques help you out. Comment below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Of course, if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. And if you like makeup tutorials and you wanna see more of looks like this, you can click on this one right here and I'll see you soon. Bye.